we have a lot of issues in Indonesian football, um, slightly different from from Filipino football. Filipino football, obviously, very new to the, the football game. In Indonesia, it goes back a long way, and these two teams really don't like each other. Um, that being said, there is no way that that dislike should have led to the tragic scenes that we saw. For me, there were there were three factors in this. The first factor being the supporters not liking the fact they lost. For no other reason, they lost the game. It, it can't just be about winning and losing. It can't just be about, well, they played better. They, they sneaked a goal at the end, whatever it was. They lost 3-2. It was a tight game all the way through. It could have been a Roma that won, but it was Persebaya this time. The fans didn't accept that. They wanted to get on the pitch. They wanted to go and remonstrate with the players. They were tearing seats out their own stadium and throwing them. Sadly, the second factor being the police's reaction to that running onto the pitch. The police's reaction to start with was to take them back into the stands, to push them back in. They did it with a lot of force, as we've seen on a lot of videos, and there's been a lot of investigations. And I think some heads of, heads of police and blah, blah, blah have been sacked and moved on from their jobs due to the, the force of that uh, pushing back of fans. The third factor would be the suitability of the stadium. They managed to get them back into the stands. They then decided for whatever reason to fire tear gas in, that that pushing them back wasn't enough. They fired tear gas in and not just a little bit of tear gas, substantial amounts of tear gas into a stadium and, a, and an old school stand that only had limited access uh, and entry. So everybody then piled out trying to get away from the tear gas. You have, you have a, a, an over brimming stadium trying to get out of these small exits and that's where the major loss of life was. There was just nowhere to go. And those that had tried to get out early then got caught in the crown because everyone came running out behind them. And there was, you know, quite sadly, I was talking to one of my ex-players today who was playing in that game. Um, he is, he's is he been traumatised to a point where he know, he doesn't know if he's going to play football again because he was telling me that he went back out along with a load of other fans to try and remonstrate with the fans to just get them to calm down, just relax, please calm down, just which often happens. You know, the players go out there and they try and ask the stands to calm down. They went back out and ended up helping the injured back into the locker rooms to get them away from what was going on in the pitch in the stands. They brought 20 or so fans into the locker room and sadly four of them died in the locker room in front of the players as the players were getting changed. Such is, I mean, it's, it's a horrific story. But this is coming from a player that I've been coaching for the last three or four years. He's telling me he doesn't know whether he's going to be able to play football again because he saw people die in front of him. People he helped into the stadium, into the locker room to try and get away from it. They died on the floor of the changing room. The fact that so many have have passed away, that this was so tragic, this was such a serious event, that, that things have to change. And it can't simply just be blamed on the police's reaction. It can't be because the police didn't, they didn't go into the crowd and start the riot. The riot was started by supporters feeling the need to get on the pitch. Now, we right. don't see that in the Western world. We don't see that in the Premier League. OK, it happens when we're celebrating, but that's all in good nature. That's celebrating with the players and honestly, the players love it. But in this situation, they lost a game of football. They didn't, they didn't lose a final. They didn't lose the World Cup. They lost against a local rival for three points in a league game. So there right. has to be a reform from supporters groups as well as police. It can't, it can't just be all on the police. But it cannot now be allowed to go to an extent where there might be loss of life due to what? Losing the game of football. It's yeah. not acceptable. It's just right. simply not acceptable when it has to change. So there is, there's a huge amount of reform needed from a number of different uh, parties within a game of football, if you like. The players are just, they go there, they do their job and they witness it. The supporters are supposed to go, watch the players, witness it, go home. Support, shout, cheer, great, go home. This time, 100 plus didn't get to go home. I just pray that, that supporters can see their part in how in how this went down you know i'm uh, please don't think uh, i'm saying that it was down to supporters but they simply have to understand that there is a responsibility that comes when you run onto a football pitch you cause a reaction and therefore anything can happen from then on as we saw sometimes it can just be a guy getting whacked over the head with a stick and he goes back up and he's got a you know a cut to show That's his it. mates when he gets home yeah i ran on the pitch and got hit by police brilliant but or it can go the other way and we see a tragic event, which is the second worst football tragedy that's ever happened. There is a culture within the football here that needs change. It needs people to sit down and discuss because people can't go to football and not come home. You know, nothing is worth that. Jessica, we've known each other a while. You know how important football is to me, but nothing is worth that. 
fans can't come to football if they can't come home. Football shouldn't be played if that's the case. So there needs to be reform. It can't just be led by a guy on television saying, yes, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. It needs to be supporters sitting down and agreeing uh, some kind of, some sort of behavioural agreement, some kind of, right, okay, this isn't going to happen anymore. What is next? What are the resolutions that are going to be discussed? And uh, how is Indonesian football going to move forward from now? Well, the league has been stopped for a, for a week until there are full investigations into what happened. And that's led by the president of the country himself, not the president of the federation, the president of the whole country. We've seen uh, a little bit of movement with heads of various uh, security forces and people that were involved in the night being removed. We've yet to see any, shall we say, disciplinary, because we expect something to be coming from, from FIFA. They, I mean, the, People aren't just going to stand by and allow this to happen. The next the next week or so is going to be very interesting to see who gets involved and what happens. Whether the league is, is just stopped for a season until everybody gets their safety protocol in place. Whether stadiums have to be shut down to be reassessed. Uh, whether FIFA comes in and says, listen, until you can handle yourselves, like Cheska mentioned earlier in Egypt. Um, maybe the league needs to stop for two years and everyone needs to just calm down and, and you know have, take a good hard look at themselves. I hope this change, I hope it's led by significant individuals within each club who are prepared to come forward, sit down, put rivalries aside and say this can't happen anymore. So thank you so much. We'd like to thank, uh, of course, Simon uh, McMenemy for giving us context on what transpired in Malang, Indonesia. And for our Kapamilias that are interested in this story, I hope that uh, Simon gave more context and that uh, we hope we pray for the victims and their families. May they rest in peace. Lastly, Simon. And may this never um, happen again. May this never happen again. Mm -hmm.